We will start the press conference by Minister Motegi. Apologies for being late. Uh, my previous appointment was extended. I have one point to report to you. And this is with regards to the COVAX vaccine summit. On June the 2nd, the government of Japan and Gavi will jointly host an online COVAX vaccine summit. Prime Minister Suga and myself are planning to attend the event. As spread of COVID-19 continues around the world, acceleration of fair access to vaccines and their rollout are urgent challenges. Japan has, to date, been leading efforts through the COVAX facility, the International Framework for Vaccine Procurement and Distribution. In this context, we are hopeful that this summit will serve as an important step to mobilize the necessary funding to deliver safe and effective vaccines to developing countries in a fair manner and at the maximum possible volume and to further deepen international collaboration. Japan will continue to play a leading role in international initiatives in the area of COVID-19 countermeasures. Thank you. That's it from me. If you have any question, please raise your hand after I invite you. Come forward to the microphone and ask your question after telling your name and organization. Yes, please. Uh, this is Tobita of uh, Nikkei. Uh, thank you for your hard work for, for the long uh, trip. At the G7 Foreign uh, Ministerial, Japan has mentioned China's concern, and many were mentioned in the joint statement. I know you have engaged in a large number of bilateral talks. As much as possible, can tell us how you appealed to your counterparts, and during your meetings with the leaders, ministers of Europe, did you feel any difference in the positions? During my visit to Europe this time, there was the G7 foreign ministerials meeting, and before and after my visit to the UK for G7, I visited the Slovenia, which is the presidency of the EU of the first half. I went to Bosnia-Herzegovina and went to Poland, which is the presidency of V4, Visegrad 4. As for those meetings in their respective countries and in the meetings of the margin of the G7 in total, I have had some 20 bilateral meetings with my counterparts. In addition to that, the G7 ministerial was organized. There was a Japan, US, South Korea meeting and V4 plus Japan. Such multilateral meetings were also convened. The major objective, one of the important objectives of this visit is regarding free and open Indo-Pacific, I wanted to strengthen the recognition of the European countries. In April, EU established their EU strategy for the cooperation in Indo-Pacific. In addition to that, by September, they plan to create their strategy, a detailed strategy which will be the joint communication by EU. Uh, for that purpose, the uh, EU is engaged in the discussion at this moment. Of course, UK or France and uh, Germany who have been engaged in the discussion so far and with countries just joining uh, the discussion, in terms of the degree of progress, there could be differences but regarding the realization of free and open Indo-Pacific, regarding this concept, we managed to share the recognition and awareness with the respective countries. The Indo-Pacific environment is becoming more difficult. So with the foreign ministers, I have engaged in meeting. And in order to realize FOIP, we agreed that we will cooperate. This was extremely timely. At the G7 meeting, the G7 foreign ministers were able to engage in in-depth discussion in person for the first time after two years. For Minister Rabe and for other foreign ministers, it was long time no see between everybody. Finally, we were able to meet physically in the same room in person. It was more than two days. It started with a working dinner. In total, including the dinner, it was three-day 
program. We engaged in very straightforward, frank uh, discussions, and once again, uh, we were able to show and confirm a determination that G7 will work in unity and will lead uh, the global community. My feeling is G7 is back. I have reconfirmed this feeling. In addition to that, with regarding China or North Korea or Myanmar, such regional discussions uh, were uh, discussed, COVID-19, climate changes, uh, these global important uh, challenges. We discussed, and in fact, Japan took the leadership, and I am sure that I have shown our uh, leadership in presence. Regarding the joint communique, there was mentioning about China and North Korea. A firm a message was issued in the form of a communicate. Here again, the unity and solidarity of G7, I think, was demonstrated. Ever since I took this position, consistently I have always mentioned about the diplomacy with a sense of caring and robustness. We will execute this uh, diplomacy. And uh, through my visit to Europe on this occasion, a rule-based, free and open international order and its importance was reconfirmed with my counterparts of European countries and agreed that we will closely cooperate. This was a huge achievement. In the respective meetings, the emergency matters that we are facing or there could be respective regional matters. We did have in-depth discussion. Japanese positions were explained. We were able to engage in very in-depth discussions, which means we have managed to mutually deepen our understanding in order to advance uh, cooperation. In this regard, I think it was very meaningful. Next question, please. Sato-san. TV Asahi Sato. I have a question with regards to your opening remarks. You spoke about the vaccine summit. At the other uh, reimbursement summit, you already pledged $200 million, and you said that you would make maximum contribution. In filling the funding gap, is the Japanese government thinking about increasing contribution? And is there a plan to announce additional pledge at the vaccine summit? As I have been saying, each country domestically is faced with the spread of infection, and each government is taking initiatives to resolve COVID-19 and the role to be played by vaccine is extremely important, fatally important. And that notion is shared by all governments, but it's upon each government to think about its own countermeasures. And even, but even if in one country they are successful, in resolving COVID-19, as long as infection remains in parts of the world, there's always the danger of further spread. So in all countries, including developing countries, we need to ensure fair access to vaccines and further expand the spread of vaccines. Vaccines. 30% of developing nations' population uh, will be provided by 1.8 billion doses by the end of this year. And it is estimated that $1.7 billion is necessary in order to fulfill that uh, goal. And the aim of the upcoming summit is to obtain the commitment. Of course, we can call upon them, but we cannot guarantee that everyone will be making its contribution. At this juncture, we have not made any formal decision on the contribution that Japan will be making, but we would like to maximize that contribution. Next question, please. Mr. Sushiro. This is Sushiro. Mr. Kitazumi, the Japanese journalist arrested in Myanmar, I want to know the latest circumstances. 
by the government of Japan, what action will you take further? And will there be legal assistance, for example, about provision of lawyers? Regarding this particular Japanese national, Ambassador Maruyama to Myanmar, the ambassador has spoken on the telephone with the journalist, and it has been confirmed that the journalist has no health problems. The position of the foreign ministry is, in order to protect the Japanese nationals, as I mentioned, by way of telephone interviews by the ambassador or by way of communication to the families, we have provided as much support as possible, and this necessary support will continue. Of course, early release is what we want, not only for this person, but for all detained persons. We demand the release. This is the position of Japan. And therefore, to Myanmar, we will continue to request early release of this particular Japanese at all levels. And at the same time, we will do utmost in order to protect Japanese nationals. Are there other questions? Mr. Azahari. Thank you. Khaldun Azahari, pan News and Arab News. Uh, I would like to ask about the Middle East. The situation in uh, Palestine is escalating because, uh, according to the reports uh, there, uh, Israeli uh, military, which is an occupation force, is uh, attacking certain spots in the area and tried to annex, according to the report, mm -hmm. some uh, areas belong to the Palestinians. Uh, so uh, I read your statement, uh, Foreign Minister's statement today, about expressing concerns, but uh, there, there are a lot of casualties among Palestinians, including nine uh, <coughs> children. So uh, Palestinian children are being killed by Israeli occupation forces. Uh, do you think this uh, needs to be uh, like uh, raised to the top level attention by the international uh, opinion? Uh, that the uh, occupation forces is uh, uh, not uh, abiding by the international uh, law? And also, uh, do you think the Security Council uh, should be held uh, to discuss this uh, development? Thank you. I know. With the clash between the Israeli security authorities and Palestinians, in Jerusalem and other parts of the area, many casualties have been caused. And since yesterday, on intermittent basis, rockets have been fired from the Gaza Strip to Jerusalem, and the Israeli forces are engaged in counterattacks. The Japanese government has grave concerns over the Israeli-Palestinian situation. Violence cannot be imposed on children or to any person, and for no reasons can violence be justified, and therefore Japan strongly condemns such action. It is the belief of Japan that the issues between Israel and Palestine are issues that will not be resolved through violence. Rather, it can only be resolved through negotiations between the parties and efforts to build trust between themselves. And based upon our position as such, Japan is calling upon both Israel and Palestine for maximum restraint at the G7 this issue was debated, and the relevant parties in the global community will be working together. And in this context, we will continue to assert Japan's position as such. And regarding the resolution of Middle East peace process, as I said, we will continue to collaborate with the global community, and we will also engage in our own initiatives, including the Initiative for Corridor for Peace and Prosperity to contribute to confidence building. Any further questions? No more questions? Then we will conclude the meeting. Thank you very much.